Okay, hope everybody's doing well. I wanted to uh, give you an update on zoysia and what it should be doing. It's the middle of December. I've got Palisade zoysia. Uh, look back at one of my earlier videos or several where I talk about uh, how Palisade should be working through the year. Works the same for a lot of other zoysias here in middle Georgia, but uh, I wanted to show you kind of a look at what zoysia in middle December. Now this is an area that has really already gone dormant for the most part. Depends on the weather, but uh, if you get a little bit um, warmer winters, or if it starts to heat up, you know, around January and February, it can start turning pretty green. You can see, I'll get down a little bit closer here, but there is still some green spots where it warms up, especially here in Georgia in the, uh, in the afternoons, it warms up quite a bit. So um, the grass is gonna still continue to grow a little bit, just very, very slowly. Uh, I would be careful about cutting over it too much, especially if you get a lot of rain, it can tear this grass up. But uh, one thing about zoysia that's great is if you do have any type of zoysia, palisades, myers, zenith, uh, all, all the different types, they will patch themselves uh, fairly quickly. So as soon as the heat comes up, the gets above about 78 to 85 degrees in the springtime, it's really gonna start to warm up. So uh, I did want to show you a couple of things though. Uh, if you, at this time of year, you should have uh, put a pre-emergent down. If you haven't done that, you might want to go ahead and put a pre-emergent, spread it over your, your yard. If you have somebody that does your yard, just make sure they've done a pre-emergent. You usually want to do that by very end of September, middle of October, but it's still not too late. Grassy weeds can uh, cause a problem in zoysia. Uh, I have a couple of areas I wanted to show you though that are a little bit different. Out here in my pasture area, I just spread this palisade seed and uh, there's a couple of different types of zoysia going on right here. This is all palisade zoysia. I also mixed in some pallets of, this is emerald, really fine. Uh, so you can see it actually has a different color. See that color change back to palisades, much lighter. So um, really what I wanted to show you today is if you haven't done it, uh, make sure that you're putting pre-emergent out it can help in early spring with some of the seed weeds like poana that's gonna come out. Uh, golf courses actually use poana because it comes out so early in the spring, uh, but it dies off in heat. So put pre-emergent, try to, uh, if you do cut, make sure your blades are really sharp on your mower. You got a high blade speed that works best on zoysia and just uh, be a little delicate on it during the winter if it's, if it's wet. Okay, I wanted to show you one other thing you could do right now that uh, works well while grass is dormant from now through mid-February. It'll still work really well. If you come to the edge of your yard, if you have zoysia or if you know somebody that does, <clears throat> this is an area that's up against some rocks and uh, I really don't uh, manicure it as much. So this is all a little bit longer. This is, this is uh, the same Palisade zoysia. I come through here in the, uh, over the next month or so, I'll just take a shovel and dig out some of this and throw it in a wheelbarrow and then take it to areas uh, that I just want to start to sprig some grass. Cut this up into little sod sections and literally just toss it out and make sure it's getting a little bit of water. Usually in the winter it's going to get some water and rain anyway, but it's a great place to take things like just an edge that you don't manicure all that much. Dig this little area up, go put it somewhere else, and this will, over a three year period, right, really try as a side aside, there are others that you can use also. This is uh, readily available at something like Home Depot. If you'll spread these granules out, it'll go ahead and start killing anything that might be in your lawn that is uh, something like uh, any of the grubs, uh, chinch bugs, uh, mole crickets, ants, any of the larvae, but that if they start to hatch, what will happen is you'll have armadillos come in and hear them hatching in the grass. They will dig up your yard. So you want to kill any of that that you can, and if they do, if it's not the armadillos, what will happen is if you have those grubs and they start to um, to be, come up in the spring, they will get underneath your your yard and simply eat away at the roots, the root system. People try to figure out why their grass is going brown in certain areas, and a lot of times it's these grubs that are down in the ground eating the root system uh, and infecting that root system. So. 
give that a try. Uh, winter's a great time to put that out and make sure that you're healthy come spring. Okay, well, one of the other things you can do if you're bagging, you can certainly bag zoysia. You can bag leaves. It's always good if you got a ton of leaves, but if you have a mulching mower or if you have a, a larger mower like I do, a commercial mower that's going to have high blade speed, uh, it's always good to mulch up the leaves, to mulch up the grass, let it go right back into the grass. It's going to have nutrients. Um, if, as long as it's finely ground, it doesn't hurt the grass whatsoever and continues to feed it. So it's taken fertilizer and feed that was in the grass and, um, and actually in the leaves, it has fertilizer as well. So um, let it, let it you, you know, go onto your grass and it's, it's basically free fertilizer. Okay.